All right, back again, Luke here. And today, as you can see in front of you, we have another one of those boards that came in that stack from Ken6275. And I figured we could give this one a shot. Uh, as I had mentioned in the video, uh, this is one that I never had a chance to play. Didn't really know much about it, but it seems to be one in one of the more rough conditions. And I figured we could go ahead and take a look at it and see what it's doing or what it's not doing. But as you can see here, this is the overall appearance of the board doesn't seem to look too bad for the most part just kinda of looking over here through the camera not too bad at all so I suppose what we'll do is first like I said just a little bit of a visual inspection here see how everything's looking and make sure there's no pins touching We'll go ahead and take a look at the top part of this again. And doesn't look like any big breaks or anything, which is good. So let's uh, let's go ahead and plug this in and check some of that. Let's go this way. Okay, what do we get? All right, get some wavy lines going on here <laughs> it's pretty trippy though it's like it's just kind of shaking and then resetting here um, what I did for well actually what we could do this time is uh, let's let's test this with some stuff here some of these tools here and let's take a look at what we get on this board uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. first off let's turn the light back on here with this thing running let's see if we're getting proper voltages Gonna put this aside here <clears throat> everything should be okay That's 4.92. I don't think you guys are going to see that with my hands in the way. 4.9, 4.91. Looks okay. Uh, doesn't seem to be any bridging going on, which is good. Let's see if we can find a test point here. Uh, I think that will be a ground point we can use and that looks like a 5 volt rail that we can use over here in the corner. So let's use our probe and see what we're getting in terms of, let's see here in terms of, um, why can't I think, signals. So we'll put one clip on here. Get another clip over here. Hopefully, Hopefully that'll work. Does that give us anything? Yeah, there we go. We've got electricity. Okay, so let's take a look here. And actually, what I'm going to have to do is uh, let's research this take a look at you can see on the board here we've got a couple of uh, sharp Z80s uh, there's one there there's one here and interesting this thing says bad up at the top there not sure what if that means bad board or bad what but let's just see if we've got a, <clears throat> a clock signal here some of the things with these uh, regular boards that you can test right off the bat is if you have a clock signal or not this will help you eliminate quite a bit of troubleshooting so let's just type in doo -doo -doo -doo. where's this one LH zero online if you take a look at uh, the data sheets like so you can see 
This will show you the data sheet and it'll show you the pinouts. The one that we're looking for here is our clock signal, which will be pin number one, two, three, four, five, six, it appears on this one. And when we take a look at it, it'll be number six on this one. We just want to check to make sure that there is a clock signal going to these chips here. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you guys can see here, we do have a clock signal for this one, which is good. And let's check this one over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one also has a clock signal. So that's a good thing. That tells us that the board is actually trying to work, or it tells us that the uh, at least the CPU is uh, working. But as far as the other logic on the board, we really don't know because it's just a, a bunch of mess on screen here. After touching that, it looks like it's not really much better. But what we'll do next here is let's turn this off and I'm going to try and remove some of the components on this board. Maybe try and clean them up a little bit and check the legs on them. And then we'll go ahead and pop them back in and check some of that. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. So when pulling these uh, EEPROMs out or these socketed chips out, there are several ways you can do it. Some people have like the, the chip pullers, uh, other people just use a screwdriver. Just have to make sure that you get in a point or an area on the board where you're not digging down into the bottom here. Um, you'll see that probably these chips have been removed a few times. Uh, looking here, you can see some of the scratch marks, but down below if you miss and you wrench down too hard You can wind up uh, ripping out one of these traces. These are really thin traces kind of very similar to like the uh, Atari Traces so this doesn't look too bad to be honest. I mean the legs on this doesn't you know, don't seem to be too oxidized, but Another thing here, this is extremely fine uh, sandpaper. I don't know what this one is. I believe, I mean, it may be a thousand or so. It's extremely fine. But what we're gonna do is just try and polish up the pins a little bit so we can make a better connection here. Let's take this one. And nothing really amazing to show you guys, but you can just go across the legs don't have to go across, you know, using coarse grit sandpaper. I mean, that would just be disastrous for these things. But just a little bit of fine grit sandpaper uh, paper can kind of shine them up just a little bit. And eventually, I mean, yes, these legs uh, will probably be more prone to uh, corroding over time. So sometimes if you have a cleaner and you want to use a cleaner instead, that's uh, perfectly understandable. <clears throat> but... We're just gonna try this here, give this a shot. So we're gonna go around each one of these and the other thing too, like you just saw me there uh, do right there. Make sure that uh, you put the EEPROM in the correct way. So you don't wanna be putting this stuff in backwards. It'll really just add more trouble to our uh, repair vid. So, <laughs> But as you can see, we've got uh, an EEPROM here. We've got probably our security ROMs over here. This is also a security PALS, more security PALS, probably used for uh, making sure that the game uh, for booting. This looks like it might be because it's around the YM3909. Uh, these may be related just for the sound section. Uh, this is where the sound amp is located over here. And these are probably, or most definitely our sprite ROMs so those will contain all of the graphics so what we'll do is like I said I'm gonna go around to each one of these and try and clean them up this is a custom chip here uh, which is probably the RGB DAC it's responsible for changing the RGB and everything it could be a a potential problem here with that. Luckily, Caius Reproductions makes a lot of these parts, so if worse comes to worse, maybe we could get one of those and put those in. These are our RAM chips here, and yeah, let's go ahead. This is a custom, which, uh, you know, the custom chips are just a disaster. Uh, if they wind up going, you just have lots of trouble trying to get these things up and running again. It looks like more RAM there, and then we've got uh, our crystal over here on the side. But yeah, I'm gonna do some of this off camera just to make it a bit faster and we'll come back and hopefully this will be a bit more 
socketed. <laughs> See you guys in a bit. Okay, so all I've done so far is I've gone around all of these socketed chips and I've cleaned up the legs and I've put them back down. So now we'll go ahead and plug it back in here and see if we get anything different. Sometimes this can change the outcome quite a bit, but it doesn't look like it in this case. Which is okay, I understand. This board is in some pretty rough shape. Let's see, does anything happen by touching the uh, RGB? Nothing really happening here. The next step we could be on, we, we, it might be the, uh, the RAM section here. Yeah, it's interesting that it's not really showing much life at all. Let's see, maybe we can change the sync no sync just makes it a bit more kind of messy there wavy lines and everything you know there is a possibility that we might be able to see more through an rgb See here, a CGA to VGA uh, converter. There could be something going on. I mean, messing around with the sink a little bit, it seems like you can see some things. So maybe what I'll do is I'll try to hook up a CGA to VGA converter and see if that changes any of the output. So let me get on that and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so like I mentioned before, I've got a CGA to VGA converter here connected up to this. And the reason why I decided to use one of these is sometimes you can see things that you couldn't normally see on a regular monitor. I don't have a specific RGB monitor. I think that would help out quite a bit, but this does allow me to kind of see some things. Um, it does change the image a bit more or make it clear at some time. So uh, I figured we could give this a go at least. So I've got the power running through here through the JAMA harness to connect to the board so that'll turn on the power there, which should turn on the power here. Um, we'll see if anything changes. No signal. Let's see. Maybe this isn't going to work the way that I had kind of planned it would. Hmm. I kind of figured that there would be something that might change by coming through this here. Sometimes changing the clamp settings lower or higher can change things. Hmm. Maybe, yeah, maybe this one's not going to work. Um, it doesn't look like it's putting up too much here. Usually it'll at least throw up some kind of, uh, yeah, something. Even if it was the wavy lines, it would do that. But it doesn't seem like it wants to even put up the wavy lines here. So, well, there we go. There's something. The heck is that? Is that all you're going to give me? Just one... One thing of green wavy lines. If I click the auto. Oh, there we go. Ah, did you guys see that? There's a bit of some graphic glitches going on there. Uh, let's exit out of this. Sometimes if we hit the auto, maybe it'll resync. Maybe not. There was something there for a split second, but well, that was it. Doesn't look like we're going to get much else uh, than that. So, I mean, it appears like there is some kind of static garbage or something uh, on the screen. And 
I'm kind of interested in what this, you know, this whole thing about like bad being written on there is all about, but uh, it doesn't change anything. Okay, well, let's see if we turn it off and turn it back on again. Does it do anything different? I think I should probably get a standalone power supply for this. It may be a bit easier to see what's going on. I guess not. Okay. Well, I mean, except for the kind of static sometimes at the top there. Doesn't seem like much more is going on. Random glitchiness. So, I guess what we'll do here is just try to take a look at some of these. Well, look at, oh, what the heck is that? What? Oh, did you guys see that? It said something. It said flow... Flow something. It just popped up there for a second. What the heck? Something was going on there. Ah, oh, there we go. We're starting to get like these kind of random glitches here. I don't know what that was though. But it came up really specific. Uh, said something flow... It's not going to do it again, is it? Just because I didn't film it. <laughs> uh, but it did literally have text across the uh, the center there, so. If I coin it up, I wonder if it'll coin up. I don't hear anything. No, there's nothing going on there. But there is some kind of activity. I mean... It did put text up there. That's so frustrating though. Ah! <laughs> One last time. Let's see if we get anything different. Just flashing like crazy. So I'm gonna have to figure something out here. We'll go back over it and see what's up with some of the RGB chips. And see there, we got a little bit of some graphic glitches. And probably nothing else. Because it's going to be stubborn. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and go over some of these other chips again. Uh, take a look at the board, see about some traces on the bottom. Make doubly sure, triple sure that uh, there's no cut traces. And just go from there. Ah. <sighs> You know, throwing up a bit of static garbage every once in a while here kind of gives you like that, ah, it's there, and then, no. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to keep flashing like that, isn't it? All right. So, well, let's get on that, and I'll see you guys here in a little bit. So right off the bat here, as I was looking around near this custom, I noticed that... In this small space here, it's going to be hard to see, there seems to be a cut uh, right there. You can see it's cutting through those two traces. That could be a potential problem, especially the one on the right there. You can see how it's kind of sliced right over here. So that may be one. Uh, I'll try and patch that up, and I'm going to look around here for any other cut traces, but we know at least we've got something possible there with uh, a couple of issues, so that's one. Okay, so I found something very interesting, and it does sometimes happen, but I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. There are two points on this board that are actually touching and it's because the solder was scraped and uh, rubbed against two pins here causing them to kind of join together and can I point this out here it's right about where my thumb is and can you see this trace in the middle and this via here are actually connected by a piece of solder and it's like something has drug itself across the board and connected itself using that uh, that small point there. I think that's also going to be a pretty big issue. 
Uh, whether that's caused any kind of huge problem or not, that's going to be a different story, but uh, there's no real way for me to get a good look or to show you guys here. Um, and in fact, looking through the camera, it's easy just to get lost. Oh, there it is. Right there. So you can see this trace and this via are touching. And I think if we go over this with a little bit of flux, let's try this one-handed, see if this works out. Just add a little bit of flux there. And we'll try to unbridge this. Like so. Now you guys can see that that uh, solder there has become free. Now, like I said, I don't know if that is actually making a connection there, but uh, that can also be a problem sometimes. And some people may think like, wow, this is a, it's a bit easy to find, but in fact, if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be really tricky. When troubleshooting these boards, you know, it's not easy um, for the most part. It does take a lot of time in a lot of cases here. And you have to think about a lot of different components, uh, the way they, f they work with the board, the traces that are connected to them. Sometimes if you, they look okay, they're not connected in some other place. Um, they could be burned out. The chip could be bad. Um, there's a lot of things to consider. But, yeah, we're going to try and take it one step at a time. I did kind of patch these two here. I'm going to go over this with some solder mask uh, just to try and keep those in place. I believe that those two are uh, a bit iffy, but let's see if this does anything different. Uh, maybe we don't need the converter anymore. Let's remove this one. Plug in our regular setup again. the adapter here. Ta -da. Okay. Let's see if this changes anything for the better. Okay, there's that. It kind of looks like a little bit better, doesn't it? I mean, it's hard to tell what's going on here but something has definitely changed. And I don't have my sink. What do I do with my screwdriver? <laughs> it does look like it's doing something a bit more now that we've kind of patched up those two points. Does it change with the sink here? No, the sink isn't really changing it too much. I put in a couple of coins and it sounds like maybe I'm losing my mind. If we press start, it does look like it's trying to play, doesn't it? Oh, listen. We do have sound. It's uh it's working. But the graphics are still not, not there, not yet. The game is actually playing now. But as far as video, uh, we've got no video here. Uh, okay, let's go back to this setup here again. See if anything changes. Maybe we'll get, uh, since it's got a, a picture now, or I'm, I'm hoping it has a picture. Let's see. One, two, three. Let's see if we can get anything different here. <clears throat> but it's alive, guys. At least we know it's getting some kind of, uh, yeah, signal now. The board is actually working to an extent. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> this is freaking awesome. Right on. Oh my gosh. 
this is what I'm talking about with these converters. Like sometimes they'll like show you something that you just can't see. Um, and as long as the, uh, the board itself is working properly, the converter will work properly. But if not, it's not going to. Yes, it is there. Look at that. We are alive and running. Woo hoo. All right. Another board to add to the repair list or the repaired list. Let's see here. Question is, can do I have any controls? Mm. It doesn't seem like I'm moving. So No, I not moving right there. So it still may be uh, might have some issues with the controls. I don't know about this one. I don't know if it needs maybe dip switches, but it is alive, guys. And that's the key thing. That's the one thing that we were looking for here is, yeah, this to be working again. And that's exactly what it is. Like I'd mentioned before, I mean, some people may take a look at this and go, wow, this was an easy fix, but um, it does require a lot of knowledge to try and get these boards to get back to where they are, you know. Um, just knowing where to look or how to fix it does, I mean, it's taken years and years of trial and error, so. But it is there. So we've got Arkanoid back up and running. I think we're going to have to scrub it up a little bit, make it uh, a bit cleaner, but yeah, definitely definitely happy about that everything else seems to be working and functioning properly those were the problems the broken traces and the scratch or so that was conjoining the two but yeah we're gonna call this one uh, a victory here but that's about all for me for right now like always I'll put up another video here soon so thanks for watching watching some Arkanoid here does this one also need a trackball? Maybe that's the issue? I'm trying to think, yeah. Very possible. But anyway, we'll catch you on the next video here for some more arcade repairs. See you guys.